Don in London, hello. It's June 1st. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Being in the right place with the right people, with the right things. T today is a significant day for me in recovery. Uh, it's my anniversary, my seventh anniversary of being sober. So seven years sober today. To the best of my recollection, this is the first day when I could say I made a free choice to try live sober. So there have been a few days beforehand, but I don't know how how clear my head was and how much I was still under the influence of very negative behaviour around drink. I was I was reflect on this day, what's it been like, and it has been a roller coaster. But for the last few days I've been sharing from uh, a book called The Desiderata of Happiness, this one, by Max Ehrman. Of course it has the poem Desiderata in it. And it has significance for me because I had the poster of this poem on my wall back in the 1960s. And when we're young, we don't really understand the full depth or meaning of what the words are and how they play out in life. So with the benefit of hindsight, I'm reading it again in a different way. And it seems to mean something different every day, depending on my experience. One or two of the lines in the poem have great impact about how I may behave. So I've, I've come to understand that sober first and then the rest of life can happen, but I'll just share desiderata. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others, even to the dull and ignorant. They too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career. However humble, it is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome, wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And, there, and whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labours and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham and drudgery and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful, strive to be happy. And uh, I, was sh I was talking with somebody yesterday, and it was, high, it was extremely useful because they were saying to me, you always have a smile on your face, you always seem to be happy. And I suppose in the, in the face of all aridity and things not being right, or things not being as I might have wished them to be, a smile on my face comes at... I suppose a price of understanding life, or a cost of understanding life, as it is today. Life keeps on going no matter what, and you know sometimes it's painful in many ways, 
emotionally and spiritually and especially physically for me uh, I captured the essence of a few other conditions along the way when it comes to recovery and being sober a day at a time so we're not immune once we start to get sober from anything else that most ordinary people can experience in their lives so uh, there's quite a lot of miles on the clock when it comes to me and sobriety has been the best thing that, that, that ever happened Ob obviously we start, our, start out our lives with a fairly clear head but we are hit by experience of life straight away and depending on our, depending on our experience of life things turn out in different ways so uh, childhood going into adulthood I was I primed I guess to be able to drink large amounts to find oblivion from reality because reality wasn't too good so these days uh, one day at a time I prefer reality and why well it's where life is it is what it is today real life on life's terms so being sober has been the saving of me and it's opened me up to the true impact of reality and some people say that is spiritual the ability to cope with what is going on today and I tend to agree with them but I wouldn't say anything is 100% certain beyond the obvious and so whatever happens in life if we keep on rolling along with a clear head we experience our feelings, emotions in the spiritual moment of now and we also deal with our physical condition as well better, sober so seven years sounds like quite a long time but in comparison to my drinking well much many more much more and many more years of drink in my life experience <coughs> and what's helped me well the fellowship of AA and I'm looking for something it's here the fellowship of AA what is it Alcoholics Anonymous well it's a, a group of people who stay sober one day at a time if they can it's a group of people each person is unique and authentic each person unique and authentic on their journey in life life experience as it is so if we are alcoholics coming into recovery or just simply addicted still and wondering how to stop fellowship can be a place to find out more from others about how it is to be sober and be free to make choices based on what we know today and in conversation yesterday I was trying to explain how I understand the fellowship works for me what I see is what I get on a daily basis so AA Alcoholics Anonymous is what you see today because the history of everybody who's brought them into a meeting or a group the history of what we know so far has made us able to share how to be sober and it's the many voices that I listen to every day which inform me about what is good to do and what is less good so I'm very lucky but if you're looking for a, a fellowship which is going to be rock steady and always the same it's not AA the fellowship changes every day as people's attitudes and behaviour change every day but there are some timeless elements in it the 12 steps for a person to keep on growing into a sober person so the rest of their life can work by being open, honest and willing to change and the fellowship itself is felt together with traditions around unity, service and recovery and these traditions are understood by every single person in a slightly different way but we understand enough of the traditions to hold the fellowship together in whatever shape or form it takes and beyond the fellowship there are plenty of internet places where you will find people talking about their recovery as I do here 
So I'm just one voice of the many voices which may be part of recovery. No bigger, no smaller than anyone else. And although it says in Desiderata that we will be greater and lesser persons around us, there will be greater and lesser wisdom around us from time to time. But harsh reality is the same for everybody, or absolute reality is the same for everybody. It's just how we understand it which is different. But with a sober head we have a better chance of staying sober so the rest of our lives can work and it gives us back our purpose in living how to love, be loved back without conditions how to develop our outlook and pursue whatever interests we have and they don't have to be the same so how, how does it work? well the uh, AA preamble here on this little card it's shared at every meeting of AA and I stress always AA is full of unique authentic people who speak for themselves where they will and it's not about conformity in the, in the fellowship it's about freedom of expression but understanding we don't always get our own way just like life life is like that apparently so AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. That's it. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's how it works. We share it. We share the burden, share the pain, share the growth, share the experience, joyful or sad. So we get a clue on how it might happen for us. And I know when I first started in AA, they, t they said one of the good things is you get feelings back because having spent years and years of drinking my feelings away because they were unacceptable to me, or I just didn't know how to deal with them and sought oblivion instead. Feelings were red raw at the beginning and then I didn't know what the feelings ought to be to fit particular situations and then I stopped trying to work out how it ought to be and asked myself how it is today. It is what it is today. So how am I feeling? Why? What can I do? So this morning I feel okay, I feel strangely okay a bit tired, a bit exhausted helping people can tire us out and I know that uh, I have to be careful just how much I do of this or I burn out very quickly and find myself trying to pick up the pieces when I can't not that easily so I go back to fellowship and say help and that works for me so seven years in I still need help on a daily basis understanding what the experience, strength and hope can be for today and that's what I share here from this book Daily Reflections one page a day and now it's June, it's all about step 6 I also share from this book as Bill sees it from time to time but not today but I'm sharing from this one here 12 steps and 12 traditions because the steps are for open, honest and willing for an individual and the traditions, unity, service and recovery in fellowship so the fellowship is what you see is what you get in front of you on a daily basis in meetings and it's a f an organisation upside down uh, at the top of <laughs> well, there isn't a top but if you were to look at it in that way at the top of all our organisation in fellowship it's trusted servants and they don't make the policy and they don't make rules or regulations because there are no rules or regulations to govern AA members there are no rules and there are no laws and no regulations it's run on suggestions and inclusion so there is no exclusion to AA and you can do what you want it's how you choose to live and how it works for you which is important so if you want your own way in AA it's unlikely to happen but if you are determined in many ways in different parts of your life where it's essential or 
desirable or necessary or you find out it's unnecessary that's how it works you work out how it works in your life so step six <coughs> this is where I get this is where the fun starts for me sometimes on a daily basis because step six is important to me daily as is step seven they work together for me and the reason is I'll read out what the step says here we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character so what are defects? well for me defects of character are extremes of behaviour where there is no foundation for what I'm feeling so defects of character for me are at the extremes of fear putting on a brave face when everything's falling up down around me and my ego trying to cover up because I feel shameful and guilty I can't cope extremes of fear putting on a brave face and ego but somewhere in the middle of all of this for me a bit of fear a bit of a brave face from time to time when I have to do something which is quite hard work and does, does require a little bit of grit and I can say to myself or to everybody else I'm putting on a brave face here because it's going to be hurtful or hurting me that's a sort of balance for me and then the other way of this that's my defects extreme in the negative or I can try to be extremely positive uh, ex exhorting to the world that I'm full of faith courage and confidence that this is going to work out when again it has no foundation in reality of now so the extreme of faith, courage and confidence without foundation which is outside the reality of now it's like yeah, if someone says can you fly yourself to the moon single handedly my faith and my courage and confidence may immediately snap to yes but I can't but if they ask me can you get on a bus and go to Trafalgar Square in the centre of London and take some photographs even though I'm a bit frail from time to time I know I've got enough courage, faith and confidence to give it a go so the ext extremes of fear, brave facing and ego and the extremes of courage, faith and confidence without foundation are for me defects of character because they're, out, they're, they're not feelings relating to my current situation so in the middle a little bit of fear, a little bit of brave facing and ego may be necessary to see me through some difficult moments in the moment of now that is and a bit of courage, faith and confidence to keep on going when it's difficult and asking for help is in balance so outside of that where my feelings are at extremes and don't fit reality that's where the defects of character for me are so what does it say about we're entirely ready to have God remove the, all these defects of character I'll just read a, a couple of the first paragraphs from page 64 which outlines what it's all about and it says this is the step that separates the men from the boys or I suppose women from the girls so declares a well loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his default all his faults without reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually it is therefore entitled and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image of his likeness of his own creator or just as grow grow as life is growing us and be able to make free choices around it of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place got nowhere or no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me 
But when I became willing to clean house and then asked for a high power, asked a high power, God as I understood him, to give me release, my obsession to drink vanished. It was lifted right out of me. That's a quote of one person and their experience. <coughs> and my experience from that can be that I need to rely on something bigger than me so the, the power greater than me which lef lifted me out of my uh, problem where I couldn't stop couldn't stop on willpower, self wills, whatever and no member of my family or the immediate community or professionals seemed to be able to do it I then listened to the collective wisdom of people who were sober in the fellowship and to me that's a higher power the higher power of many voices expressing how their sobriety is working it helped me stop obsessing about trying to do it on my own because that's another one of my defects I need to do it on my own to prove my worth in society and actually nobody does it on their own and those who do try and do it on their own become excluded because nobody can deal with them and that's what happened to me in my drunkenness my alcoholism I couldn't deal with myself and nobody could deal with me either so I had to get to a point where I had a moment of clarity and I was able to start to say I need help and then it was a slow steady struggle and there were absolute benefits immediately from stopping because there was pain and that pain I didn't really want to go through again although I did from time to time in the early try at recovery and then a steady understanding it was one day at a time so this thing about defects of the character being removed well you know life experience will kick up the dust and bring back extremes of fear brave facing an ego and sometimes extremes of faith courage and confidence because it's going so well I trip over and stumble on my enthusiasm so the defects of character for me are the, the extremes of behavior but if I have a balance of living experiences offering feelings which are the same size as what is going on you know happy or sad absolutely hilarious or absolutely desperate I start to understand what my feelings are around real life so real feelings in the moment of now same size as the experience I'm having means I'm not experiencing defects of character if I am experiencing the extremes then something is wrong and it may be that something in the moment of now has kicked up uh, a lot of history a remembering of something I have done which was wonderful or absolutely extremely painful or a painful experience which just comes as a recollection and when that happens I get out to a meeting and share about it I'm not actually living in the moment something's come out of my history and I'm not sure what it means so today how am I feeling right now I feel right sized <coughs> right sized in the moment my spiritual condition is uh, understanding reality as it is and my emotional feelings right now are pretty okay no bigger no smaller than what is going on and physically I'm relatively okay as well so how do I put step six in context uh, so beginning of the month step six I read from the twelfth step in this book twelve steps and twelve traditions where there is a, an absolutely brilliant summary of how the steps work together and it starts on page 110 it says here AA's manner of making ready to receive this gift lies in the practice of the 12 steps in our program so let's consider briefly what we've been trying to do up to this point so I've been going through the steps one a month which follows the outline of this book and I hope for, hopefully by December completed another round of the 12 steps because if I do that as part of my daily reflections just a reading a day it puts me in mind of what the step is and what it might mean today so this is the summary from the AA 12 and 12 
Step 1 showed us an amazing paradox. We found that we were totally unable to be rid of the alcohol obsession until first we admitted that we were powerless over it. So, yes, admitted powerlessness and life was unmanageable. In step two, we saw that since we could not restore ourselves to sanity, some higher power must necessarily do so if we were to survive. And for me, that turned out to be the collective knowledge and wisdom within the rooms of AA, plus life, people in life as well. It's not just AA, which is the story. Consequently, in step three, we turned our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. And that, or a higher power, God a higher power as you come to understand and it's your personal understanding which works because if you try and adopt another person's understanding of God you're trying to copy another person's understanding of recovery and of course recovery is a personal journey of learning so we learn it by doing we don't learn it by listening and then theorizing about it for the time being we who were atheist or agnostic discovered that our own group, or AA as a whole, would suffice as a higher power. And in my case it was beyond AA, and it was beyond the group of AA, or groups or meetings that I attended. It was a combination of professionals, family, community, the person on the bus, me being open to listening. And the, the favourite thing is, for th step three is, let go and let God, or let go and let good, or simply no, I'm not God so therefore there is a higher power out there and it's the universe and whatever you perceive it to be is your personal understanding and that's, that's absolutely essential not to adopt uh, a set of values which don't feel right or a power greater than you which doesn't feel right but just understanding if we have humility keep learning then every power is probably greater than us where we get our knowledge Beginning with step four, we commence to search out the things in ourselves which have brought us to physical, moral and spiritual bankruptcy. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory, in other words a life story, which included all the disasters and also the successes, so we could understand where things went wrong and extremes of behaviour or defects. Looking at step five, we decided that an inventory taken alone wouldn't be enough. We knew we would have to quit the deadly business of living alone with our conflicts and in honesty confide these to God and another human being. So all of May was about step five, being open and honest and sharing the truth of who we are, warts and all. At step six, many of us balked for the practical reason that we did not wish to have all our defects of character removed because we still love, love some of them too much and one of mine is sharing old stories which have fun in them and not mentioning just how blinking difficult life was along those in those days about just feeling wrong with the world so I don't know how many of us do bulk at the defects of character because once we know what they are they are the extremes of behavior which are unhelpful and don't fit reality I don't see that that's so difficult really ultimately when we see that reality is far better than where we've come from for, yes and it says here for the practical reason that we did not wish to have all our defects of character removed because we still love some of them too much yet we knew we had to make a settlement with the fundamental principle of step six which is about balance and so is step seven so we decided that while we still had some flaws of character that we would not yet relinquish we ought nevertheless to quit our stubborn rebellious hanging on to them we said to ourselves this I cannot do today perhaps but I can stop crying out no never then in step seven we humbly asked God to remove our shortcomings such as he would he could or would under the conditions of the day we asked now this this particular statement then in step seven we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings such as he would could under the conditions of the day we asked and what I've realized is these steps only work one day if we have them in mind so step six asking for removal of defects or extremes please God let me see it fairly clear to, clearly today 
and if I get out of balance I hope I have the wisdom to know what's going on and shortcomings is paying no attention in my opi humble opinion paying no attention to the steps on a daily basis and going backwards rather than forwards that is forgetfulness, purposeful forgetfulness because it's painful and difficult at first but I also know that my shortcomings are never having any faith, courage or confidence and only having fear, brave facing and ego so if I'm wrapped up in fear I can't get to faith if I'm wrapped up in putting on a brave face peop I can't let people in so being open all these things so defects is stuck somewhere shortcomings is uh, an inability to access the truth of now with a bit of courage and faith and asking for help so then in step 7 we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings such as he could or would under the conditions of the day we asked or for me please God help me be mindful that these steps only work today and that life is happening and if I know my feelings are fitting reality I can either ask for help or just get on with it or get on with it and make sure with another person that I'm still going in the right direction in step 8 we continued our house cleaning for we saw that we're not only in conflict with ourselves but also with people and situations in our world in which we lived so step 8 house cleaning, making a list of people we had harmed and being willing to make the, the amends and so we listed the people we had harmed and became willing to set things right we followed this up in step 9 by making direct amends or as some people say restitution whatever it happens to be to those concerned except when it would injure them or other people so it's not about me coming to see you and saying by the way 30 years ago I did X, Y and Z and I'm truly sorry and expecting an, uh, well that's alright it isn't like that it's about making restitution based on what we've done and where restitution will not harm further by this time at step 10 we began we had begun to get a basis for daily living and we keenly realized that we would need to continue taking personal inventory so in other words step 10 is what's disturbed me today what's worked today and what do I have gratitude for and that when we were in the wrong we ought to admit it promptly and that we can do it any time if we ask ourselves, hang on a minute am I actually going towards calamity or serenity and often it's our own attitude and behaviour which is kicking off inside us and makes us behave badly towards other people but equally if people are being ba bad and nasty to you don't hang around was it, hey you get off my cloud, yes in step 11 we saw that if a higher power had restored us to sanity and had enabled us to live with some peace of mind in a sorely troubled world then such a higher power was worth knowing better by as direct contact as possible the persistent use of meditation and prayer we found did open the channel so that where there had been a trickle there was now a river which led to sure power and safe guidance from God as we were increasingly better able to understand him again it's a personal understanding of a higher power in your life and what was a trickle at first for me in meetings of an understanding of sobriety and the wisdom of the world has now become a better river which uh, flows quite nicely most of the time and improves my ability to reflect and meditate on what works and what doesn't work in life so whatever your higher power is based on your faith as a, and a God which is firm or simply a higher power and good conscience the same outcome can be achieved in terms of quality of thinking and feeling meditation that we can do so practicing these steps we had a spiritual awakening about which finally there was no question looking at those we who were only beginning and still doubted themselves the rest of us were able to see a ch the change setting in from a great number of such experiences we would predict that the doubter who still claimed he didn't or hadn't got the spiritual angle and who still considered his well-loved AA group the higher power would presently love God and call him by name which is a personal opinion so if you don't find yourself calling or love God and call him by name 
I don't know that that is something we worry about too greatly depending on our faith and our belief but if it's essential in your life absolutely so for me what is God or who is God well I like Gandhi's version and this is just my personal opinion and not anybody else's God is truth, love and wisdom and it's the universal truth not my opinion about it it's how to love and be loved back truth love how to love and be loved back unconditionally and the wisdom that is learned as we go along truth love and wisdom wisdom often coming from others in the moment of now so spiritual connection to the moment and ability to cope and 12 steps to help us stay with it in the moment and these steps only contingent on the day we ask so when we humbly ask God to remove our defects of character or help us deal with the extremes of behavior extremes of attitude and extremes of feeling when we're asking for help from others is ask accessing the, the greater power of life the universe and everything because it only, only exists for us right now that's the moment we have so in essence these 12 steps do work for me so Jim will be all about step 6 and how it works for me anyway always good to remind myself and uh, you know doing, doing you don't do the steps you live the steps contingent on the day you ask and keep them in mind so if we become forgetful then they don't work if we are mindful of life sober steps and that our whole experience in the moment is enriched by having the freedom to choose based on reality now that's wonderful because we make short term plans and long term plans we have somewhere to go and we are what we are so the serenity prayer which helps me in any moment always at the end of my videos to God or in good conscience it works for me God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me always in a moment and just for today Don in London hello June 1st 2009 my video is all about recovery from addiction to substance or behaviour. My favourite substance of addiction was alcohol. Not very good at uh, collecting other substances. Too frightened, I guess. And I think I, I smoked about three or four spliffs in my whole life. And they didn't do very much for me. I was far too much into drink. So, substance and behaviour. The other behaviour for me, workaholic always. Always fearful that I wouldn't be enough for other people. Or I couldn't do enough. And I wanted people to like me, so a bit of a people pleaser. So, what's important about June 1st for me? I'm five years sober. And that's good. It's taken a. I don't know where it's gone actually. Five years. Sorting out what is spiritual, what is emotional, what is physical recovery. Emotional, spiritual, phys physical recovery. One day at a time. So, I know that I wouldn't have done it on my own. And I know now there is a way to keep sober one day at a time and that is to make my life one day long just one day don't make it too big too small try to approach it with a, an equal attitude towards others that is I'm no bigger or smaller than anybody else and that applies to everybody else too they're no bigger or smaller than me we all have a right to be here I think Plato said that some time back and I'm sure other people feel that way so there are good reasons to have resentments in this life but at this moment in time I have no resentments against anybody life has dealt me a pack of cards and uh, some of it's been glorious and some of it's been abject misery so the gift of recovery is I feel life as it is today in reality and reality is my spiritual connection so I operate hopefully with a good conscience and when I might be off beam a bit I have a, a set of steps to help me that's the 12 step action program of AA Alco Alcoholics Anonymous yes I am a fan and you know where am I now I'm just gently moving through each day sometimes it's happy sometimes it's sad sometimes it's joyful sometimes it's just desolate 
because of the impact life has on me so I do my best and uh, even when I'm trying to do my best I could be doing my worst for other people so one of the things I always say here is I do not speak for AA I do not speak for anybody who's in the fellowship we are all unique authentic people and the reasons why I do these videos is for me to share my experience, strength and hope and uh, it, focuses me, it focuses me on my daily living and uh, it's been doing that for five years so I'm lucky AA is, is what I share about here and I went to uh, I didn't go to any meetings yesterday I was doing photos and out and about and seeing people who I know inadvertently because a lot of people around here are in the fellowship so it was a good good day with an, uh, an enjoyable dinner with a very very close friend and uh, yeah I've got friends so I'm smiling at that I don't know that I ever had friends properly because I didn't even know who I was so gent gently on a daily basis I am finding out who I am and I can look in the mirror and see myself just gradually being me so who am I today I'm just Don and um, sharing some experience strength and hope here so the fellowship of AA is integral get sobriety right first then the rest can follow and I can then love and be loved and then have something useful to do so there's a lot going on for me and it uh, changes every day so that's what the recovery has done for me life doesn't stand still and I don't step back into the past too much and I don't try and work out what the future can be unless there are simple things which do need a little bit of planning like uh, economy and stuff like that so that's good so the fellowship 700 meetings in London here UK and we share a preamble at the beginning of every meeting and it goes like this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So that's the primary purpose of the fellowship and uh, the primary purpose of an individual is to work out what, how to be open, honest and willing to change attitude and behaviour, to fit in, be a part of, be included rather than excluded in living, family, community, society and often it takes a hard, hard, long road to even make sense of life at all and that was me for the first year or two I suspect I may have known intellectually what was going on but emotionally, spiritually and physically I had a lot of, I suppose, repair work to do and get into recovery and it's not easy and uh, I've been trying to help one or two people lately and the awfulness of having to go back to resentment and anger because it's not easy and we can't be fixed and that we have to gently work out how to be ourselves sometimes we can say okay the we can wipe the slate clean now but we have consequences from our past and some people don't want to know us anymore and we can start again and that's a very hard thing to do if we've been um, stuck in addiction either substance or behavior for a long time and especially if we were ignorant of where we were, what we were doing we have to be ignorant of our condition before we can get to the place of denial that many people talk about with addiction uh, you have to know that you're in addiction first before you can deny it sounds a bit strange doesn't it but uh, you know people don't want to believe that they're addicted to anything so our intellectual capacity is to reject the notion and then get stuck which is where I got and uh, it's taken a long time anyway the uh, reading from the daily, daily reflections today we've moved on to June so that's uh, step six in the AA program which reads about defects of character it's a very short sentence it says we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character and you know defects of character come out of the fourth step fearless moral inventory which we then share in step five with, other, with another person and our good conscience or God as our belief system is so a changed outlook it says here our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change 
When I was drinking, my attitude was totally selfish, to to totally self-centered. My pleasure and my com comfort came first. Now, I, that now that I am sober, self-seeking has started to slip away. My whole attitude toward life and other people is changing. For me, the first A in our name stands for attitude. My attitude is changed by the second A in our name, which stands for action, attitude and action. By working the steps, attending meetings and carrying the message, I will be restored to sanity. I don't know that I was ever saying, but I, th I think I do get some sanity on a daily basis. Action is the magic word. With a positive, helpful attitude and a regular AA action, I can stay sober and help others to achieve sobriety. My attitude now is that I am willing to go to any length to stay sober. And, uh, you know, we can be forgetful as we get a bit further on in recovery because we stop craving and obsessing over the addiction that we had and start to move into a place of attitude and action or attitude and behavioural change. Then life does get somewhat more interesting. It doesn't mean it's going to be all jolly hockey sticks and joyful stuff. It means that we take on reality as it is. So the spiritual connection is reality. And as one Archbishop said, spirituality is the ability to cope with now. No bigger, no smaller than that really. But that's enormous because life is not that easy. So here I am in my 50s, five years sober. And the gratitude I have for a program which has just helped me to understand what fellowship can do for me. It hasn't made me a clone, it hasn't turned me into a cult member, and it hasn't made me too dogmatic. It's made me ask the questions on a daily basis. What can I do today to help me in my life and other people? And that means I'm doing something useful, and I can be loved and loved back. Or I can love and be loved. So, for me, when I say the serenity prayer to good conscience or God, whatever it might be, and, uh, you know, we are unique and authentic. We have our own outlook, and long may it be so. The serenity prayer to God or good conscience. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It always changes by the day, and it's just for today.